Well, everybody, welcome back to Gentle Dorks. And this is sort of a new show. I put up a post a while ago saying, give me a list of bad movies, terrible movies that you've seen throughout your life. I will watch them and review them. And I said, if they are bad enough, the people who said the movies, I will bring them on. And Kyle here suggested the first movie, and I thought it was just the name of the movie got me thinking, this is going to be an experience. And it was. So, Kyle, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> it's a, it's an honour to be your first guest on this segment. On this show, yeah. Well, you gave me a hefty list, and I've watched a few of them. This one, <laughs> I could not get through in one sitting, the first go. It took me three weeks because I had to, as I know, I can't, I can't. And then I had to go and watch some other things. Then I came back to it, uh, and it was yeah. it was only like two days ago that I actually watched it through. Full go, is that right? I need to do it in one go. So, so I've done it, and wow, <laughs> it's a, it's it's a good film. I mean, I wouldn't say it's good. Myself, <laughs> it's it's certainly a movie. I'll call it that. It's a movie. But uh, yeah. the movie we're going to be speaking about is Suburban Sasquatch. And if you haven't seen it, you know, find it and watch it because it is an experience. It, it, yeah, it is. It's um, you know, from the first time I saw it, it's it was. It was one of those films that I enjoyed. It's, um, I'm always impressed with people who make films, you know, who, who get a film made. And, you know, the director did that with this, you know, yeah. he made a film and it's out there. It's, you know, it's out there for people to see. And there'll be, there will be people who love it and people who just look at it and, um, don't enjoy it as much. Yeah. I, I'll, um, I'll be in that section where the people that don't enjoy it, it's not a film I will go and watch again. But, you know, fair play to thought... everybody involved, the director. You could see there wasn't much of a budget Yeah, for this movie. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it was $500. Something like that. But they'd done it. They got it made. Yeah. And considering the budget that they had, which was essentially zero... I think what they made for that budget was okay. I've I've seen some student productions that are a lot worse than that. Yeah, yeah. I've been involved um, in a lot of student productions that were worse than that. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, but you look at Rotten Tomatoes, and um, it doesn't have a an official Rotten Tomatoes score, no. but the audience score is twenty nine percent, which yeah. is. A tidy amount. It's higher than some of the movies that have been coming out recently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um and it is. It's I've always loved animal attack type films. I'm a massive Jaws fan. And yeah. um I was introduced to it by my mate Mark. And every time we get together, we don't live near each other. So every time we get together, we have some drinks and watch animal sort of the, the these type of movies, Grizzly. Yeah. Orca, um, lots of shark ones, and um, he then introduced me to Suburban Sasquatch, um, which you know it 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 it's ninety minutes of fun, you know, yeah. with drinks. Yeah, I mean, j just before we come on, you said that it should be a drinking game. Mm. Oh yeah, and I think that would make it more enjoyable. If it was a drinking game, it's like any time you hear the music, the off-key, yeah. squeaky music, you take a shot. Because, my God, after the first 10 minutes, you'd be on the floor. Yeah, well, you'd have to drink responsibly. And, of you course. know, we'd always encourage that. Um, but what I think I love about the film is some of the deaths are hilarious. Yeah. That is one um, of the things that got me. It's like, I mean, throughout the history of movies and TV, we've had death scenes galore. This had to be 
one of the funniest ones where his arms are flying over the car and yeah. legs flying over the car. And that, that was only wrong. within the first two minutes. Oh, it's 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 a phenomenal start to the film. Yeah. Um, but it is, and there's so, there's some CGI. You yeah. know, what was it made two two thousand and four? Um, I was reminded of the TV show Nightmare mm-hmm. a lot um, with it. But um, yeah, yeah, there's there's arms ripped off. There's, I think, there's a leg ripped off. Someone yeah. gets an arm. There's an arm ripped off, and then an arm. That arm is then thrown at someone. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, who ends up in the in the river? The two fishermen. Um, so it is. It's it's just um, it's just yeah. It's I, I think it's a film that knows what it is. Yeah, they they weren't going and making you know the best movie in the world. They were making a film. That they wrote and thought we want to put this out, and they done it. Yeah, yeah. And it's... as I was like watching it and I was looking into it and I saw how much of a cult following it's actually got. It's actually got more of a following than some big budget movies. Yeah, yeah, and you know. Uh... I have been recommended the director's earlier film, Fungicide, um, that um, apparently mushrooms of all shapes and sizes run <laughs> rampant through the woods. So I, I, I will be um, looking for that as well. Um, just just because, you know, he obviously has a... The guy has a sense of fun. Yeah. And it doesn't take itself too seriously. You know, the... Spoiler alert, the Sasquatch can disappear at points. Yes, it can. Um because it's magic. You know, it's magic. And um but it, it it is, you know, and it's it's one of those um it's a film with a central idea and just lots of death set pieces, yeah. which it, it yeah, for for a good sort of a, a good night of just having a laugh, and you, you and mates can, you know, get together and watch it. I, I think it's it's an enjoyable, enjoyable film, and it has some wonderful catchphrases. Um, the fisherman who turns to the other fisherman and goes, "Beer me," to get yeah. a, a can a can thrown at him by the fisherman. Yeah. Um, and uh, the the newspaper editor who says. I don't have faith and I don't believe I sell. Yeah. That 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 is a hard boiled newspaper editor. It totally um, is. Um, I mean, you know, he sorry. I was just gonna say you, you can see that they they know people that are like this because the <laughs> the people that the way they wrote people, it's like that is how people would act in this situation. The script yeah. is very well written, surprisingly for how I felt it was not like the best movie in the world. It's it's not going to be up there with like the top tier monster movies and stuff like that. But it fits yeah. in because the people are actually real. This is how they would react in that situation. Yeah, and I think there's I think it suffers from too many ideas. Like yeah. um the whole idea of the Sasquatch attacking because the the suburban element is moving closer to his territory yeah um but then there's the police corruption um you know my wife was taken by the sasquatch one of the police officers wife yeah. was taken by the sasquatch so that's yeah there's there's too many ideas there yeah. you know th- th- this could have been a franchise i'll it be could, honest it could have been if they'd spread it out but have the first one where it's like small town, corrupt cop, and then that's there. Then the next one, yep. the newspaper and the politicians get involved and stuff like that because you could feel that coming into it as well. And then the third one, the whole magic thing about it. You know, there you so go. What, there's you your say- what you're saying is it's like the wire. Yes. Yeah, it's up there with the wire. Yes. Each, each season could, you know, 
now we're talking TV shows. Each season could have an overarching theme, um, and it's it's drawn out. Yeah. With that. Um, I, th- I think you're right there. So they just tried to get everything that they wrote down onto yeah. video. It's like, right, that, with, with, here's an idea. Let's do it in 90 minutes. Yeah. Like, I read a review that said, oh, if they cut half hour out of it, it'd be a much better film. Um, but, yeah, then... Where, then would, you, it, where it, would you put those cuts, though? That's the thing. Because, as a whole, it's like it, it worked. It's just they tried to fit too much in. Yeah. If they had what yeah. they had and take some of the things out and put them somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and... and yeah. Obviously, due to budget constraints, you're going to have, you know, day for night, you know, a, a, a lot of the night scenes are just blue tinged. Yeah. Um, has a blue filter on it for, for day for night. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, like I said, it's enjoyable. It's, it's, it's just one of those things, films, you can sit down and not have to think too much about. Um, yeah. Unless you're thinking of overarching themes and, and you know, multiverse. There's probably a multiverse. There's probably a... a so I thought it was going to be the sequel to Suburban Commando, the Hulk Hogan <laughs> film. Um, but it wasn't. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised by that. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, but it's... <laughs> like I said, I, I love this sort of film. And... I will always take my hat off to anyone who goes out there and gets it done. Yeah. I think to have that can do attitude um is admirable. And I think we now live in an age where even more so now than 2004, yeah. that people can make things and get it out there for people to see. Um, it was probably a lot more difficult in 2004. I think it was. I mean, uh you think about Kevin Smith back in 1994. Yeah. He worked in the store that he was filming his movie in. He worked there all day, filmed there all night, which is why he done it in yep. black and white, because he couldn't afford the colour cameras. He couldn't afford... So you think of that then. Ten years later, they're making this. They can't afford the HD cameras from 2004, yeah. which, you know, nowadays, HD cameras, you know, a lot of things it. are filmed on like mobile phones and tablets and stuff yeah. and they're, it's yeah. great quality but 10 years ago camera phones weren't that good you needed no. an HD no. camera which were very mm. expensive like hundreds and thousands of pounds or dollars in America and for what they'd done yeah. and the people that were in the movie you could clearly see it was friends and family and a lot of them weren't yeah. actors no, no, I think that's a fair point. Um, but like saying it about with the CGI, yeah, you know, this was, bef- you know, af- you know, when After Effects and things weren't probably affordable, yeah, um, for people, you know, it's we're you talking sort of, well, you're talking Lord of the Rings trilogy era. Yeah. Where you know you talk, which obviously is highly, um, you know, wet the digital, yeah, um, but, uh, experts in the field, and um, but you know, you look at you're probably looking eight years after the Frighteners, um, yeah. mm-hmm. which you know, and and I know everyone holds Jurassic Park up as CGI, the pinnacle, and it's still, you know, it still is, it still looks yeah. amazing, you know, every time you go to the cinema to see it, it's amazing, um, but. For someone who in their home was doing it, you know, yeah. it's admirable. Yeah, I mean, you could clearly see that they've just got a hold of some CGI equipment on the laptop and they've just played about with it. Yeah. yeah. And it's like they have had no clue how to use it. No. And they've taught themselves. And for a completely independent movie, with no training whatsoever. Yeah. They've done well. I don't think I could have done any better at that point in time. 
no, I, I don't think I could do as well now. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would you know people who have been there, like cameramen and stuff like that, CGI yeah. people. I mean, I don't even edit my own videos here. I pass them on. <laughs> I no, don't know how to but... edit them. I could learn, but that's the thing. Yeah. They done everything themselves. Yeah, yeah, and so... it's yeah, you know, just looking at the credits. Um, I think I think he he did it all. He edited it. Mm-hmm. He produced it. He wrote it. Yeah. He composed it. He composed the music. He did. Um, yeah. And he's he he's he did the the Sasquatch noise. Yeah. Which you know people are, people have used in memes and things. And I've seen that. Know. As soon as I watched the movie, I was like, I've heard that sound before. And then it, it's like, oh, I've heard it there and I've heard it there. And it just goes to yeah. show that something that's that wasn't huge. It's not been a massive success. As it I mean, in the zeitgeist, yeah, it's there. Somebody's well, it, heard yeah. that and went, "Oh, that'll fit there." Yeah, it's so like the Wilhelm scream, it. isn't it? Yeah, you know, it probably won't be as widespread as Wilhelm scream, but yeah. you know, it, it's it's uh, there. There's some weird choices of use of the CGI. Yes, um, when. Um, the net over the the hunters. There's a CGI net. Yeah, I thought and that was like, a CGI thing. I was like, ah, why didn't they just get a normal net? And chuckle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I suppose it's the classic adage of "we'll fix it in post." Exactly. Someone forgot the net that day. <laughs> they fixed it in post. Yeah. Um, you know, it happens all the time. It's a it's, it's Hollywood convention. It does. Um, but, but it is, it's, um, you, you know, you, you watch it and like you said, it's obviously friends and family, a lot of friends and family. Um, but <laughs> there, there's something sweet about it. But it, like you mentioned clerks, you know, that was friends getting together. It was, um, yeah. And you know it it paid it off, and Kevin Smith took a massive risk he with did. that. You know, was it twenty seven thousand yeah, dollars with the credit like card debt? Yeah. Um, Should... And 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 this is yeah, it's kind of in this is kind of in that that sort of filmmaking vein yeah. of um of of those films of. And then, you know, when you looked at um, Slacker, the Richard Linklater film, and, yeah. um, you know, and a lot of people now will think you can't compare Suburban Sasquatch to those films. And and it's not comparing, it, it's not that comparison. It's the the going out there and doing it. Yeah. And that right. and that's how you learn. And, you know, and that's, that's, uh, that. and that's how people learn. I mean, it's, no, nobody that's made a movie has went out and made the best movie ever as their first movie. It's very rare for that to happen. Yeah. They go in, yeah. they do smaller things, they build it up, they build it up, and then they get to where the big, big directors are. Of course. So this was him writing it because he wanted it. He's like, this is my script. Nobody would pick it up. He's like, fine. I'll write it, I'll produce it, I'll direct it, I'll do the music, I'll do the costumes, I'll do everything. I'll get people in he and did. I'll make it. And he's done it. <laughs> and you he have did. to respect it's, somebody you know, that goes out and says, I'm going to do everything in this movie myself. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I know it's a bit of a... I can't remember what he was in, but there was there's a comedy sketch where it's, written by this person, directed by this person, produced by this person, edited and everything. Um, but needs must. Exactly, you know, it's, yeah. um, so I'm trying to work out how many... Um, he has a lot of credits. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that's how low-budget filmmaking works as well. It it's, is, yeah. I mean, when if you compare him to like Kevin Smith, he didn't get 
the praise that he deserved for those movies no. until like fairly recently in like the past ten years. People weren't yeah. expecting much from him. The comic book fan, he made this silly film himself, and there was like groups of people that didn't like it. Yeah. And it's because it wasn't made for them. It was made for well, a certain generation of people. And that's the yeah. people who got it. Well, and it's like this this wasn't made for a certain group of people. This was his passion project. He made it for himself. He put it out there. If people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. And I'm not I'm of... not gonna I'm not gonna go and trash a guy's movie because I don't like it. He done all of that himself. I respect the hell out of him. Yeah, and it's I remember Kevin Smith telling the story about mole rats and um they said how much do you need? And he went, oh, I think we can do it for three million. And they went, You can't make a movie for three million. And he was like, Well, I, I've made one for twenty seven thousand dollars. And they went, Oh, that's not a movie. <laughs> yeah. like, but it is, yeah. it exists. Um and you know is phenomenal um yeah. but it yeah it is it, it is and when and when you asked when you put out the poor saying like bad movie um i it, i took it in the sense of that it's not i suppose what the majority would think yeah of yeah as um a bad movie but when you have like i think i've seen it now about four times um four or five times and and when you when you sit with it and you you watch it every time i go back to the as you said this was someone's passion project this was yeah. someone who you know had an idea and was like, I'm going to do it. And that is, you've got to take your hat off to, yeah, to people like that. Definitely. People who will go, you know, I'll, I'll do that and I'll get it done. And, and this could be a calling card. And, um, you know, you see it all the time, you know, you have people who, who take the risks. Yeah. Um, I mean, an another movie it's, that I've got know, on this list is the Sharknado movies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was, the first one of that, that was a passion project. Yeah. And, and, and this, I had no idea that was going to span a franchise and a spin-off of two movies as well. And well, yeah, and you, you look at the Asylum films and... Um, but it goes back to... To, to the sort of tradition of Roger Coleman. Yeah. You know, and, and you look at the number of people that Coleman sort of nurtured. Yeah. Joe Dante, um, James Cameron, mm -hmm. encouraged Jack Nicholson to write. I know. Um, and, and, it, and it does go back to that. And, you know, with, with the Asylum films, I like the first Sharknado Mm -hmm. As a massive Jaws fan, when the second Sharknado introduced characters called Brody on the plane, um, I kind of tapped out. Yeah. Um, but you can look at you can you can look at those films and go, "There's a Sharknado, but the streets of LA seem quite dry." Yeah. Um, but but with them, you know, you look at then uh, Roger Cole and Sharktopus. Which he did for sci-fi. Obviously, sci -fi, the sci-fi channel pick up a lot of these. Shark the Putch, Shark the Putch, Shark the Puss. They're enjoyable films. They, I've actually they... watched. I've actually watched uh, one and two because there's a third one as well. I've not got to that one yet, but I fairly enjoyed them. Actually, well, they were, they were Shark the Puss has a silly brilliant movies. theme song. Yeah, I mean they they didn't take themselves seriously because. It's a sci-fi movie made by the Sci-Fi Channel. They pumped some money into it. It's like, don't yeah. take yourself serious. We don't. And, and, and that's and what Suburban Sasquatch does. Yeah. It, it 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 knows what it is. Yeah. You know. I mean, I, I probably will go and watch it again. I mean, I've done yeah. I've done one watch through over three weeks. 
Then I done a watch through a couple of days ago, right through. And I'll probably go and watch it again. I mean, I say, oh, I'll never watch that again, I'll never watch that again. There's only actually been one movie that I've watched and we turned it off after like 20 minutes because it was so bad and that was Teeth. I haven't got through that, but it is on the list. So I'm going to have to go and watch it all the way through. It's like, oh my God, I don't know why I've done that to myself. Yeah. <laughs> They yeah. um, but there's been big budget films that I've gone. Oh, I'm tapping out. Yeah. Um, you know, because if we all like the same thing, then the output would be pretty boring. If if we exactly. all could conform to an algorithm, then you know, um, yeah, cinema gets dull, and yeah, it w- it would just be a place of sequels franchises reboots yeah. and it, it self-perpetuate yeah you know but, I mean, and, but then every so often you get a film that comes along and it's like yeah that's amelie yeah. the first time i saw yeah. amelie and i i know jean, uh, jean-pierre you know was a famous director but i went to amelie without knowing that much about it mm-hmm. and loved it and you know if if it was down to we all like the same thing, that probably wouldn't exist. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the whole thing about remakes and reboots and sequels, and I've done videos in the past about them. And recently, in fact, just today, I saw that they're thinking about doing a They Live reboot with Matt Reeves directing. I mean, yeah. I love They Live. I love mm. Matt Reeves as a director. He's a fantastic director. Yes. Yeah. But we don't need a reboot of They Live. We have it. It's a cult yeah. classic. We don't need it remade. Yeah, no. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's weird. Like something that he can go and take and make it his own. Yeah. An original story. Put it out there. Suburban Sasquatch, as much as I didn't enjoy it to my heart's content, it was an original story based yeah. on a legend that is out there. There's hundreds of different stories about Sasquatches. This was his story. Original story, I'm behind it. I'll watch it, maybe enjoy it, maybe not. But it's an original story that this man made with no money whatsoever. No, no, no. And, you know, it's maybe a Matt Reeves remake. Um, Who knows? You know, who who knows? It's, um, but it is, it's, there's, as you said, there are, there's lots of Sasquatch films, but there's lots of shark films. There's yeah. lots of, um, there's only one cocaine bear film. Um, That's true. But um, for now, I did Born. see, is is cocaine shark coming? I'm sure I, I read somewhere. I, I, was, that... I was reading an article about something like that, and it's like, they're just trying to live off the fame of cocaine bear. Well... And yes. the thing about cocaine bear is you go into that expecting what you got because the tagline is it's a bear on cocaine. That's yeah. your movie. <laughs> yep, cocaine shark is um came out this year. Um but, but it is, and it, you know, when you look at some of the asylum the asylum films, they look at the current trends, the current yeah. big budget trends yeah. and um, thing, um, but it's uh, uh, sorry, I'm now distracted by the trailer for Cocaine <laughs> Shark, and um, but I'm gonna turn that off because, um, yeah, no, um, but it's the thing is, there's a multitude of different animal attack films out there which exist, you know, yeah, you've we've, we've sharks are done a lot because it's quite primal. And yeah. Jaws is the greatest film ever made. So yeah. why wouldn't you? Um, yeah, I mean, jo- Jaws is definitely one of my top movies. Well, Jaws even gets, a, I think, a homage in um, Suburban Sasquatch with the dog. Yeah. Um, and that, po- that, that poor dog. <laughs> um, if, 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 if you're a fan of dogs, which I am, there is an upsetting scene um, yeah. in the film. Yeah. Um, but you know that was that dog was like Pippet in Jaws, um, 
luckily in Jaws, you don't see what happens to Pipit um, in Suburban no. Sasquatch. You see everything. You definitely see what happens to <laughs> to the the dog. Um, and there's 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 a lovely um, Star Trek thing where um, Suburban Sasquatch um, takes someone away, and the reporter is like Talia. It's a very calm moment. Yeah. Um, so it is. It's um, it's yeah. It's it's just a film that. Some people will like it. Some people will be indifferent. Some yeah. people will think it's terrible. Um, but it's a film that exists. And yes. for that, um, you have to take your hat off to everyone involved because yeah. it exists. Yeah. So just before we go, I'm going to ask you for a star rating for the movie. Personally, I would have given it one and a half. I was going to say one, uh, but after my second watch through, it's like, you know, it's, it's not as terrible. I think the first time you watch it, it's like, what is this? Especially when, you know, it's not the type of movie you're used to. Yeah. Which is why I've only given it one and a half. So I th- I think two and a half. Um, it's diff. Out of five, we're going, aren't we? Yeah, out of five. Yeah. <laughs> Just to double check. Um, and it's always difficult because um, you know, Jaws, strong five. Um, so yeah, two two and a half. I go two and a half because um, it's a film that you can sit down and well, I've watched it multiple times, and any film you can watch multiple times. With like, obviously, I watched it once recently, just just for this podcast. But yeah, yeah, the four times have been of my own volition, and yeah. any film that can take you when you think I'll watch that, you know, I want something that I don't really have to think that much about. Um, or it can be on in the background while I'm doing other things. Yeah. That's a nice two and a half film. Yeah. Well, there we go. I mean, overall, not the worst movie in the world. No. But respect to the man because he made that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, good for him. And, you know, I now need to go and find Fungicide because... Um... I think that I'm going to have to try and find that myself because that sounds amazing <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's um, and and, and that's I think that's a testament is that I saw that and it's like, well, yeah, now I have to go and see, go and see that yeah. because you know, suburban Sasquatch intrigued me that much. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Well, oh, be it's been great having you on, and oh, I've got you. that list of that's... other movies, and I will get to them eventually. It's just I've got so There's much so going on, it. so much content coming out. So many other yeah. ideas for other types of videos, and so I will get round to them when I get to them, and I might reach out if there's one that sticks out from that. And yep. yeah. you're welcome back on the show anytime. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's always a pleasure to talk about. I love films, so it's always yeah. a pleasure to talk about films. Um, so yeah, no, and thank you for having me on. And no um, problem. Yeah. Well. On that note, I will leave you to ponder Suburban Sasquatch and advise you to go and watch it yourselves. Don't call anything off just because people say, oh, this is bad, this is good. Watch it yourself and then form your own opinion. There's no point in listening to Rotten Tomatoes because we've heard about what they've been doing recently. (laughs) Um, So, gentle dorks, See ya. Goodbye.